from the Miami Heat in the Eastern Conference Finals. And the defending NBA champion Toronto Raptors lose in seven games. Hey, Raptors have had an amazing run, a tremendous season, and they brought this to seven games and came up a little bit short. And give credit to your opponent. Media access will be maintained in designated locations outside of the locker room and clubhouse setting. These temporary changes will be effected beginning with tomorrow's games and practices. We will continue to closely monitor the situation, take any further steps necessary to maintain a safe and welcoming environment. We uh, take the sports world very seriously, but wins and losses and, and you know the numbers don't really mean a lot. It seems these days when our world has been affected, of course, by COVID-19, the coronavirus uh, scare that has gripped the entire globe. And we, we hear these words after, you know, many sports events have been affected. Uh, they are playing some soccer matches with no fans right now. The Women's World Hockey Championship has been canceled. There could be more cancellations throughout sports. scholarships, all those kind of things that'll, that'll, that will really drive. And I, and I just feel this. I feel like I was given a great job, right? I had a, a lot of divine intervention step in last year, you know, ball bouncing on the rim. My mom tipped it in. <laughs> and we knew from there we were the team of destiny and we were going to win it. Yeah. And 
But God, I don't know. If, I don't know. I don't see really any reason why we can't do it again. To be honest. Yeah. With you. Way over my time to speak here. Um, I just want to tell you, I just want to tell you thank you um, to, from the bottom of my heart. All the stuff with how, how the Raptors are received and um, cheered and and uh, loved. Man, you can feel it. And especially thanks for coming out here and supporting us tonight. Let's, let's get there. Let's have some fun here because it's gonna. That's what we're here for. Music's fun. Music enriches our lives. Takes it off our minds off everything, expands our minds, makes us more creative, makes us less stressful, makes us feel good. So that's what we're here for tonight. In case you're just joining us, as Adrian Wojnarowski reported, with Scott Van Pelt in our studio moments ago. Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz testing positive for COVID-19, the coronavirus. As a result, the NBA will suspend play. The league will go on hiatus following the conclusion of action tonight. The league will use this hiatus to determine the next steps for moving forward regarding the coronavirus. The NBA uh, confirming the action a night the nba and sports in this country has never seen has descended upon us and throughout our league unbelievable it really is amazing that we're here like for me personally i really really trust like the leadership at the top of the nba and and know they're just on top of it right they're on top of it and i know they're having tons of discussions with with the entire league with with health professionals with government officials all those things to make sure they're doing the right thing and and i'm fully support whatever they they tell us to do and and you know let's be you know help the solution and and get it taken care of as quickly as we can all kind of be on the same team with that my hope is we play you know like uh, that's 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 my honest hope you know like i um i, I i'm thinking and i'm hoping that we will you know, like, um, uh, just because I'm selfish and this is the job we do, you know, like, um, first and foremost, I, every day I hope and pray for people, you know, like that have gone through this in the worst ways, you know, and they come out of this uh, strong. And um, we all come out of this strong together, healthy, you know, and, and fight this virus, you know, like, but my hope is just being selfish for this is what I do, you know, like I hope we play um, mostly because um, there's something about sports and you can feel it everywhere. You can feel it in the air. There's something about sports that brings people together, you know, like and I've had that blessing in life to be part of it, you know, like and I hope that um, we can come back and play. Um, and make people happy again, you know, and um, give something, give the people something, you know, like to look, to look forward to. There are fractures in the thin blue line in Minneapolis tonight. Four officers were fired today after video of a brutal arrest showed one cop kneeling on the neck of an unarmed black man who ultimately died. Tonight, protesters clashed with police in the pouring rain in a city enraged. CTV's Tom Walters on the evidence that's graphic and very hard to watch. And a more than 10 minute video shows I cannot breathe. the officer was still kneeling as bystanders cried out. He's not resisting arrest or nothing. Still kneeling after the man became unresponsive. Floyd was pronounced dead at hospital. Good evening, everyone. We begin with the unnerving tremors across America tonight from the deep and dividing fault lines rooted in racism and unchecked policing. In major U.S. cities right now, protesters are once again unleashing their fury at the system that emboldened four Minneapolis police officers to choke the life out of George Floyd. I cannot breathe. 
to see somebody kneel on another person like that, put his hand in his pocket, you know, like and um, to see somebody cry out um, like that and end up dying and with other people looking on. And that's, it's not something easy, you know, um, for I know everybody to watch a very difficult thing. I've been watching really closely in what's been going on. When this incident like George Floyd was brought to um, everybody's attention, when things really sparked back up, you know, you constantly fight those battles um, daily and yearly and throughout your life. But um, uh, in this moment in time, after the George Floyd incident, I, I watched it pretty closely. Um, and it was almost to the point where I started feeling myself getting uh, bogged down in the situation and having my emotions change and it was really affecting me. It's what we question, which to me, forget police, forget all the um, brutality, forget racism, uh, humanity. Who are we as human beings is the question I ask. When we came from our parents, how were we raised? Because we weren't born being policemen, we weren't born uh, being racist. You know, like, so it comes down to humanity and what we're teaching. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. With everything going on in the world today, it's the same fight that we've been fighting in the 60s and 70s, you know, and um, when you look back and study the history, you know, from being a history major and, and seeing how the change and stuff came from it, it came from standing up and saying enough is enough, you know, and uh, you do it both ways. You know, and I've been more on the Martin Luther King approach of the peaceful and, and trying to talk and have people change their hearts. Uh, but I feel like now when you, when you see so much going on, you want to take the Malcolm X approach, you know, and the body of the enemy is necessary. And I'm going to stand up and I'm going to fight back and, and I'm going to protect what's mine, you know, and meet fire with fire, you know. And so I think it's a, it's a, it's a balance of both that needs to go on to show change and to make change. And the only way you make change is that way. You know, you're going to demand for something to be done now. In every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of our children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last, thank God Almighty. Man, it's been heavy. Man, it's seriously, it's been it's been heavy. Um, that's 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 all I can say. I mean, it was it was um, it was heavy early. Thinking, man, there's a lot. There was a lot of good happening. There was a lot of guys' careers taking off. There was a lot of guys, you know. There were so many scenarios that just get halted. And and you know, I kind of remember when the pandemic hit. The first thing I thought of was let's let's step back here for. A bit. Let's step back for a week or 10 days. Let's let the guys breathe. Let's let them process here what's happened, right? Um, so that was heavy and, and getting through some of that. And then, and then the, the racial injustice stuff was, was twice as heavy. You know, it was, it was um, again, I mentioned it, you know, it was getting these guys together and, and, and long calls, lots of silence but lots of sharing, lots of just heavy air, man. Even though we're all on computer screens, you could feel the, the, the weight on everybody with it. Um, and, it and it has, it, it, that's all I can say is it's been, it's been heavy to deal with. The NBA is gearing up for the return of the basketball season. Top 22 teams, now nine on the Eastern Conference side, 13 on the Western Conference side. The plan obviously has the 
a chance to work as long as you continue to have each and every person in that bubble maintain that high level of professionalism that I trust will be in place. It's tough. I mean, it was tough. I think everybody dealt with it. Like, I'm not, uh, I'm not any different from anybody else, other than I, you know, I have money to, for convenience. Um, you know, I was comfortable, but I was just as scared as everybody else. I have two small children who I, you know, didn't want to get sick. I have grandparents. I have people in my family that don't have the resources that I have. So, uh, you know, loved ones that you know I was worried about and worried about myself and. Um, the mental aspect of being locked in the house for that long um, and, and going through that and being away from the game that, you know, kind of is what I am. Some of my friends were asking me, when, when's, the, when, when's the last time you went a month without, you know, being able to shoot a basketball? It's like, literally, I can go back to probably elementary school. Like, once I started taking basketball pretty seriously in like fifth, sixth grade, uh, I was a, I'm, I've been a gym rat my whole life. I love it. Um, so that's definitely, you know, was really hard right away. During the summertime, like, I usually take like two weeks break, like top, like that's like when I'm feeling myself, like that's the most I take. So um, yeah, that was, that was definitely, um, since my, my little basketball career, like that's the most I've ever uh, been, you know, kind of like out. It's kind of a tricky situation because obviously I miss the game. I miss the guys, I miss the team environment, I miss playing, um, I had, been able to play any competitive five on five, one on one, three on three, anything during this, uh, you know, suspension. So I definitely missed the game, but you know, you know, I got two small kids and a family that I was with for four months, every single second of every single day, and so leaving was hard. And you know, adding coronavirus to that is is not the most uh, glamorous situation to run into, but. Um, here I am, and, and I'm, I'm just trying to be optimistic and look ahead and hope to make the most of it. Oh, it felt good. I mean, it's it almost felt like a new season, but it was a continuation of an old season. So, you know, it, it's kind of like a, how you doing? How's the summer been? But uh, it's still the same season, so it's right back to normal. So a little mix of, you know, new greetings and kind of picking up where we left off. Obviously, all of us have been kind of coped up for the last few months, um, kind of hoping and waiting for this opportunity for the league to start up again. And I think it's a good opportunity for for our team to all get together and just the league itself to to get out and play. Um, obviously, the country is in a, a tough time right now, uh, and you know, sports has always brought you know unity for everyone, and I think it's a, it's a good opportunity for that for the NBA to kind of be in the spotlight. Well, optimistic, you know, like uh, I'm a positive person, and I I honestly feel that. Um, uh, going forward, this is this is something that is going to be a breath of fresh air for uh, for everybody. And um, I know Adam Silver, the Players Association, uh, they've they've everybody has put in everything that uh, they can to um, to get to this point. And uh, as a team, as a team president, I'm I'm truly optimistic that we will um, we will play ball. Like when you don't see them, you know, live and in person, you're not close to them for a few months. That when my first, um, you know, feeling when I first saw them, I was like, man, they look great. 
Everybody came in and looked strong and, and, and they looked in shape and they were eating right and taking care of their bodies and exercising, you know, during that time off. So, so nobody took it easy during that time. But I do, I, I said that about all of them. I said, geez, I said, it's, you know, it's great to see you. You look great. You look ready to go. And, and you can see it on their individual workouts. They're, they're in condition. They're in good shape. Uh, they, they didn't miss too much of a beat. So, and, and, and the little time that they did miss, you know, that three months that they did miss, they've already made up for that. Yeah, they've been great. Uh, the guys are working hard. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot of fun to get back in the gym. You know, it was far too long that that three months plus. You know, where uh, where we didn't have our group together. So it's it's nice to see them. You know, on an individual basis, but at the same time, you get to see them all throughout the day. So uh, it's been great. I mean, obviously, it's a different feel. You know, the rules and stuff about how many players and coaches are on the floor and at each basket. Feels like we're going to basketball camp a little bit, right? We go we go over there at 8:30, and we don't we stay there all day because we got limits on how many players and how many coaches can be uh, just one player at a basket. So we work the gym for a good hour, hour 20 minutes, and then the cleaning comes in, and that's a little break time in between there. Four more guys come in, we do it, and that just kind of goes on all day. So it's a it's kind of like a basketball camp feel. We're in the dead of summer too, so that that kind of makes it feel like basketball camp too, but. Um, as far as what I've seen, is it's been it's been great. The players look fantastic. I mean, absolutely. When you when you see them with the eyeball test, they look great. Uh, their attitudes have been also fantastic, um, and it feels like we're we're in really early stages of kind of getting back going. You know, because it's such a limited one-on-one -on -one skill work individual type thing we're doing now. But but um, everybody's in a good good frame of mind. I really like the individual work that especially a lot of our young guys have gotten. I think it's been it's been way more consistent. I mean, when you're not flying and playing and games interrupting and there's late flights where you need a day off the next day, it's just been it's just been a consistent block of work. I um, mean, we feel good, you know. I mean, obviously we're a little bit rusty and we haven't been at this high quality of of, of workouts and, and basketball. Uh, for a while, but everybody's been doing what they can and everybody looks good, feels good, they're confident and they're ready to get back in, into the full swing of things. It's building. You know, just listening to them talk, it, it, it's building and watching them work out on the floor. Uh, you can see it, this team, this team is hungry. You know, we're, we're attacking that title and, and here we are, you know, we got, you know, three weeks before our first game yet, so uh, it just continues to build. Well, I think you you know you probably understand the, the obvious goal is is any way we can do it get to Orlando safely, right? And then and then and then you start adding some some layers of icing on the cake and guys get their legs back and conditioning, skill, feel for the ball, etc. As much as that as you can advance, as long as you're um, again with your your basic primary goal in mind of just getting getting to Orlando safely, you know. The first week's been like, man, gone by in a snap of a finger. So that's a that's a really good sign. The, the days, uh, again, I, I'm not sure it's moving that way for everybody. From but for the coaches, you know, we get up pretty early and we go to the gym pretty early and we're there all day. And you come back and you eat, and it's about time to to get off your feet and get ready for the next day. So the days go by pretty pretty quickly. But yeah, we're we're trying to mix in some days off. We're trying to uh, m you know mix in a, a lot of different activities as much as we can do under the conditions. Woo! Quarantine nothing, this is awesome. We had a barbecue the other day. It's kind of nice, you know, it takes takes an evening and, and it was good. Thanks a lot. 
ping pong, there's pool, there's there's a few other other things we're trying to trying to mix in there too. But um, I think uh, again, I just I don't really sense any any uh, much anxiety or or people worrying about man, this is going to be a long time. The the, the language has been positive. Um, you know, we've already mixed in some some off days and. Um, Trying to keep them fresh, and, and they seem they seem really good. This is legit Rob Manford ball. Paulie's got a little cannon down here going. Short. Nice. Yeah. Hey, can you slow it down a little? Yeah. Yeah, Naples has been great. Uh, it's been great, I think, for all of us to get back around each other, um, from the coaching staff to the players, um, everyone just getting back in the gym. Getting good workouts in, you know, for me, I play golf, so a lot of days I work out in the morning, um, get treatment, you know, uh, get some good food, and then get out and play 18 holes, so it's, it's been a nice life. Yeah. Your boy out here, man. I just did my thing today. Um, definitely the winner. What you do, man? Some crazy, man. What was your score? You know, uh, some crazy. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Like this, this golf thing is easy, man. I do this in my sleep. You feel me? So I'm just out here, man. Just you know, it's it's, it's nice to have a little competition, but when it's not to your level, you know, it's, it's a little tough to, to, to also be out there, you know. So. Um, it's right. Fred is good though. Fred is good. He's not bad. He's not bad. He's not bad. So, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of competition, but I'm just on a different level. That's all it is. Oh, I heard you had some birdies today. No, 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 not that. None of that. None of that. None of that. We did some good things today, man. Man, the goal is to hit the ball. Oh, I hit you. A lot of good things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, good day. Good day, pretty good day. Um, enjoying the sun. Team, you know, everything. <laughs> man, you know what I mean? Just having a team function, man. You know, you know what we do, man. Um, Zaya, golf night, golf date. Yeah, it's nice, it's nice. down, find a home, it will. then it's going to bounce left, bounce Ooh. right, you got it though, Ooh. good job. Ah! Hope you guys enjoy it man, see the clips, check check the clips man, um, play the clip, open gym, Ooh. we out here, golf, you can, you, can, you can check out the highlights too, if you, if you don't believe it, you don't believe what I'm talking about, check the highlights man, that's what it is, yo, check the highlights. <laughs> ah man, good times, I suck at golf. We all do. Get in the hole. Get in the hole. Yeah! Yeah, Matt. Three under, Matt. Yeah! Um, the, the resort is really nice. You know, they have all the amenities. Uh, the staff has done a great job is making sure that uh, we're getting everything that we're used to. Uh, the organization has done a great job to making sure that we're comfortable and. Um, our needs are being met, you know, and um, we're able to go off on a golf course and tennis and this and the other um, down here. So, I mean, it's not the same as I was used to back home in, in Vegas and having my own place and being able to move around this and the other. But um, uh, it's up to standards and it's giving us a little taste of what it's going to be like in the bubble. I think we got a pretty good situation here, um, kind of being locked in our own little mini bubble here. Um, so pretty simple. I think we got we got some 
some interesting guys on our team, but for the most part, everybody is, is cool with hanging out, chilling, going to the gym, sleeping, playing video games, you know, whatever, whatever it is you're into. So spend most of the day, you know, working out and getting your work in, try to get ready for, for the, you know, the rest of the season. And then, you know, trying to find stuff to do with the rest of your time without, without getting too crazy. Actually, like lucky that we're in this um, in this place here where um, we can kind of uh, control this. You just have to abide by the rules. This is the life that we live in, you know, like now. So we stay focused, we stay healthy, um, and um, we stay together um, with, with with all of this. And um, we'll give you, we'll pass as much information. Uh, as we can, and please ask questions, you know, like concerns, anything, ask your questions. And just remember our goal here is to get to Orlando as safely as possible. And understand it's a delicate balance because a lot of us haven't been doing anything for three months and you're excited to get back. Just always keep that as your focus, right? Your focus is safety first, safety second, safety last, right? If we can get to there and get get in shape and get a few shots up here and there, but as long as you're keeping that safety part as your main focus at all times, okay, that's really the goal, right? It's really the goal. Just keep safety first, listen to what these guys are saying. If anybody's doing something they shouldn't be, just tell them, hey man, you forgot your mask, put your mask on it, you know, whatever. Let's, let's, all, let's all use this as a positive, to, to do things even safer and better so we can get to Orlando, okay? Cool. You know, I'm Dr. Howard Petroff. I'm the Assistant Medical Director for the Raptors. And I've been in this role now for approximately the last 16 years. You know, the challenge with COVID is it's evolving quickly and we're learning more every day and so the protocols that had to be established would be, you know, may have to evolve. For us, every other team in the NBA was able to work within their home market. So a lot of the policies and procedures that we had in place in Toronto, um, we had to translate down here because we couldn't take advantage of that. We, we weren't in our home market, you know, with all of the supports that we get from our network of individuals. So we had to essentially recreate this down here uh, in an area where, well, I have never been before and I don't know if other of the staff have been either. So we were coming into an unknown environment, but we had to plan as much as possible to try and protect everybody to the best of our abilities. When it came to the planning, we had to make sure that the facilities would be appropriate. And again, uh, remember, we're, we're not just talking about the athletic facilities like OVO, for example, which has its cleaning protocols in the gym at OVO, that where everything is at our disposal. We had to organize things at a, at a facility down here that was essentially closed to the public 
And then we had to put in the exact same infection control policies and procedures that are mandated on us back home. We had to put them in place down here, both at the, at the court area and in the gym area. So coordinating that and organizing it uh, was definitely a distinct challenge. In addition, then we also had to look at uh, the housing situation because obviously if you're in Toronto, the players have their own houses, etc. Here we were, you know, coming down to a hotel environment uh, where we had to ensure that the standards were in keeping with what we expected of the players back home because this now became our home. And according to the NBA, when the players were, were returning to market, they essentially were to quarantine within their home and the practice facility and minimize unnecessary exposures elsewhere. Down here, uh, we were fortunate. The hotel we came to for the first week we were here, it was closed to the public. So in fact, we were the only ones you know, at the hotel and we were able to manage and control things in a more defined manner. We had to make sure that there were policies in place for you know, food services, uh, making sure that there was appropriate distancing uh, within, the, within the dining area, making sure that the food service uh, was partitioned off, that people weren't serving themselves. Uh, there, there's a buffet where there are servers behind plexiglass. There are uh, stanchions and ropes to keep distance further apart for individuals. The table settings are large tables with only two people across from each other. So just trying to you know, ensure that we are following public health guidelines for uh, physical distancing. There are hand sanitizing stations everywhere, which is really important. The uh, players and staff are always encouraged to constantly hand sanitize uh, masks. We have masks to wear everywhere. So, you know, those are the same protocols and requirements that we ask of others. You know, we're trying to follow the same as well. You get used to it quickly. You, you do. You get used to it and everybody's accepted it. You know, wearing the masks and the gloves and, and social distancing, they've, they've done a great job with it. And, and I, I just think it becomes habit very quickly. You know, the hotel's been very accommodating to us. We've got good protocols. We've got, you know, areas for us to, you know, enjoy ourselves. So I would say overall, it's been pretty comfortable, you know, considering the situation, we've been able to manage it pretty well. For the past several months, I have worked with the leadership of the NBA to help set up the coronavirus monitoring program, which will test each individual daily on the Disney campus. Our goal is to try to get to Orlando as safe as possible. Um, I feel like we're really safe here. I, I know the numbers are, are, are way up there and going up, but I, I feel like we've done a great job with the protocol and uh, the measures that were taken. Uh, feels, feels good, and I would imagine the Disney bubble will feel good too. And I don't know, let's just all, for everybody's sake, hope the numbers go the other direction here at some point. When they go into Orlando, I think, you know, from a general perspective, uh, protection-wise, I think they'll be in an even better situation because everything is essentially locked down for the NBA in the areas that they're going to be. Unlike here, where the hotel is open to others, in Orlando, that won't be the case. Everybody who will be in the hotels are NBA related. There aren't any other guests from elsewhere. You know, challenges going forward, um, they have all of the supports they, that they're going to require medically there. I think the challenges will be the duration of time that they potentially will be there. That's, that, that is gonna be difficult. Um, being down here for two weeks, separated from you know family and loved ones is a challenge. The length of time that they're talking about there, I think will be ongoing. And I know that they have lots of supports available for people. Uh, look forward to progressing along because each stage, uh, right now it's all the individual workouts. I know the guys are all itching to get out there and uh, start working with each other and against each other. So I think that's something to look forward to. Thanks,
I don't really see much of defending the title. I, I think I try to look at what's in front of us. We got a good team who honestly believes they got a chance, or uh, and they certainly knows, like I said before, really hard to beat, really hard to beat four times, right? Um, and I think that um, they believe in themselves, and and I and I think they also believe there's still a bunch of ceiling. I mean, we were playing really well. We were played really well this season. We were playing really well. I think won four out of five on the West Coast trip when the, when this thing hit, and and we're rolling, and we weren't healthy. Um, so I think everybody's anxious to see us healthy, and hopefully we can stay healthy and see what our ceiling can be with this team this year. Spicy. <laughs> I think this has geared us up perfectly for that. I, I really do. Um, I know they're going to have everything in the bubble that we need. Um, and, and the biggest thing is we get to start playing basketball games again. Uh, and, the, and the time will fly by and, uh, and we're going we're gonna to go after it. Yeah, I'm very exciting. You know, I can't wait because, uh, like you say, we didn't really have anybody uh, during the whole season this year. And uh, I think it's, it's going to be a little weird in the beginning to have everybody at the same time, but I think it's a good thing because we need that. Uh, you know, we need that. Uh, and uh, I can't really wait how it's, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to work out for us and having everybody back. Yep, it's the character of our guys. It's the character of our franchise. Um, you saw it. You saw it last year in the championship. You saw it this year, how we bounced back after losing a big part of our team. It's the flexibility. It's the underdog. We don't have the, the ego and the attitude that's going to handicap us in this situation. Like, that's our advantage, that we're so open and we're so flexible to different things that we want to win and we have a great team with great coaches. And uh, I think, you know, like I said, we have a good chance as anybody. No, I'm excited to get there. Um, obviously, it's this has been in the works for so long. You know, it was so much speculation whether the season was going to be able to restart or resume or not. Um, I'm excited. I think my teammates uh, feel the same way. We're excited to get back out there and just play. Um, I think the NBA has done a really good job at making sure we're going to be as safe as possible. All the protocols that they have in place um, at the hotels and at these facilities are, are going to keep us as safe as possible. And hopefully, you know, the spread of the virus doesn't enter the bubble and, and we can, everyone can remain safe and healthy and um, we can have a really good finish to the season because obviously that's what all the players and teams want, and I think it'd be really beneficial for fans to be able to watch something and see people of all different races coming together for a common goal, common purpose, um, you know, which basketball has always done. <laughs>